Hello and welcome to Deploying Across Environments, an episode in the MarkLogic Data Hub video series. For this tutorial, we will assume you have attended the class using the MarkLogic Data Hub. If you haven't, I would encourage you to visit marklogic.com learn to find out more details on that and the many other classes we offer. So as you have learned, the MarkLogic Data Hub platform is the simplest way to integrate data from silos, removing friction, and simplifying every step in the process. This includes deployment. As you will see, you can easily take what you've developed and redeploy to another environment. For example, you may have done all of your development on your laptop, and now you want to deploy it to a test cluster running in your machine room. So our starting point for this demonstration is where the Data Hub Framework class ended. My development environment is set up the same as that with an employee entity defined and a harmonization flow created. Now my test environment, as I swap over here, you can see is starting off as a clean slate. So this is running on a separate host. MarkLogic has been installed and initialized but that's it, there's nothing else there yet. Remember when the Data Hub project is initialized, you get a number of Gradle property files created. This is the default one that I've got displayed right now. Notice it's just called Gradle properties. It defines all of the initial default values for our Gradle deployment. Details for all the properties available can be found at this website. This one is the local one that we used for class. In it, we had overridden the credentials that were being used. Now we're gonna go and create another one for our test environment. To do so, I am going to start by making a copy of everything that is in the generic properties. I'll then go and create my new file and paste it in. So I'm going to let my editor go ahead and comment out all of this since I'm not going to use most of it. But it's nice to have it at our disposal so we can avoid some typos. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of it. And we'll go up under our edit. And I'm going to say comment and toggle comment. So now everything's commented out. And I can go back and uncomment just the ones that I am interested in. So for my purposes here, I am going to go and make use of our username and password. And I'm gonna have these as admin and admin. If you are interested in not having those as plain text, we do have a tutorial video that can assist with that. If you go and check our MarkLogic University site, I also need to go through and set my host because again, the whole point of this exercise is that we're not gonna be going against our local dev environment. We wanna to go to against our test environment. Now, in my case, that is going to be based off of my IP address for my other machine. So that's 192.168.113.0.0.0. Now in your situation, you'd probably have a machine name in there, but notice that I'm not supplying any ports. The ports are assigned farther down in other values, in other properties. But I'm not overriding any of those. We're just going to use the defaults in our test environment. So I've made my copy. I've commented everything out and just uncommented the handful of pieces that I need. Now I need to go ahead and save this. And how I say this is going to be important. The naming here is what is going to tell the system what the name of the environment is going to be. So everything is going to start off with the Gradle and the dash. And then we're going to have our environment name. So you can see we already have that local one that we used last time. This time I'm going to call this one test.
And there we go. That is my environment file set. If I change my mind later on, if I need to go to a different location, if I need to have different credentials or override the names of databases or port numbers, anything like that for my test environment, I will set here in my test properties. Remember at this point that my test environment has nothing, no databases and no app servers. We're going to use Gradle to deploy the entire solution we've already developed with a single command. You can see that that command is Gradle, and the Gradle task is ML deploy. If you're curious, details for this and other Gradle tasks can be found in the documentation. Now that the deployment is done, let's go and look at our test environment. And with a quick refresh, we can see that we do now have our databases created and our app servers have been stood up. This means that we are now ready to load content. You could choose to load the content into your test environment however you wanted. For this example, I'll use the same method that the Data Hub Quick Start used under the hood during the class and leverage MLCP. I have four settings files pointing to my four directories of employee, department, salary, and triples. I'm just going to run MLCP using each of those. With that done, let's actually look at our content. With the import complete, I can now go in and look at my staging database. And if I look at the status, I can see that I do indeed have the over 2,000 documents that we would expect to see after loading our content into staging. In order to harmonize in the quick start, you click the Run Harmonize button. Under the hood, it was using the hub run flow Gradle task. We can cut out the middleman and just run that directly. And now that I've jumped to my query console and brought up one of my files, we can see that it has been harmonized and that my employee entity has been populated. If for some reason you needed to change your harmonization code, such as the content SJS, you could edit it, and then you would need to decide if you would deploy and test to your dev environment first, or just keep working with the test cluster that we've been using. Again, that decision would be up to you. Fundamentally though, the steps are gonna be the same. You're gonna make your code change, and then you need to go and use the right Gradle command to get your code change pushed to your environment. And it's going to push to whatever environment you specify using the environment name parameter. So we do need to make sure that we are pointing to the right environment. For example, here I am pushing to our test environment, again using that environment name parameter. Now my task this time is the ML load modules. This is a surgical mechanism that we have for updating the code. It is not doing a full redeployment. It is only dealing with our code modules. Now, once I have gone and updated those code modules, I would want to go and rerun my harmonization to make sure that all of my files are up to date. After you are done with your testing, if you need to clean up after yourself, the Data Hub makes that easy too. We can use the undeploy task. This will go through and remove the data, the databases, and the app servers for us. Note that there is a mandatory confirm property that has to be supplied. With that complete, let me go over to my admin interface here, and I'm going to refresh. 
and you can see that all of my databases and my app servers and my forests have all been cleared away automatically. To get MarkLogic, download it from developer.marklogic.com. Get more training by visiting marklogic.com learn. Also, a complete selection of on-demand topics is available at mlu.marklogic.com slash on-demand. Or download the MarkLogic mobile app available on both the Apple App Store and Google Play. Thank you for watching this MarkLogic University tutorial video.